you know, I must say with them um, all theorizing, which much of the spiritual is, I mean, we learn by our experience, so we get an impression of what works, but we don't know it will always work. We don't know that it's necessarily right or always right. We surmise from our experience and our reasoning. And we come to conclusions that are more or less helpful. Um, you know, the ultimate is, God has told me, is still veiled by, as far as I know, I think, I get the impression, I thought it was God, and so forth. That being in this part of creation, at least, always has a measure or a veil of uncertainty about everything we do look at, remember, think, aim at achieving, try to understand. Uncertainty is everywhere. We do not have the um, uh, omniscience of God to the fore continuously. Um, as children, we can almost say, even at all, um, we are not in the confidence of adulthood. We're in the brash confidence of childhood. And uh, so, whatever you might think of my suggestions and ideas, advice, um, prescriptions and statements, whatever I'm saying, it is as well to remember, I mean, some measure of uncertainty has to still be present. Um, and in that sense we say it is wrong to worship man, whether it's the priest or the great seer or the, s the presenting avatar, uh, you know, we could be wrong. Uh, the wonderful guru might just be fraudulent as we see him at some future date. Um, I'm not saying anything about probability. Uh, you know, whether this is probably true, very unlikely, etc., etc. I'm saying simply that there is always a measure of uncertainty, and to ignore that is to um, court treachery and danger, a reliance on presented truth that's not truth. So, um, we join with Plato, aren't we, a fundamental principle, which is, he's talking to the oracle and you say, well, you think I'm the wisest man in Athens, but I can't see it, I'm not sure of anything. And then it dawns on him, this is his wisdom, that he knows, or he's fairly sure, that he's not sure of anything. <laughs> is that an oxymoron? He's fairly sure that he's not sure. No, I think that's, I think that's consistent. You can work it out logically. Um, yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And... Thank you, Lord, too, in that I take hold of this as a blessing. If you've allowed uncertainty to be in such such measure in, in this universe where you are caring for us, then it's for a blessing. That's what I reach out to take hold of. And I take the uncertainty as a blessing. And certainly my, certainly, how's <laughs> that for a contradiction? Certainly my study of uncertainty seems to have been, there we are, I'm trying to put it right now, but seems to have been a blessing to me. Um, and that's been a thread that's been going through my life. Well, it goes through everyone's life. 
it seems that uncertainty is always there. Now don't get me wrong, you've had times when you've had overwhelming moments of enlightenment that you have felt to be utterly sure, faithful and true. Fine, that's okay with me. Um, perhaps it is. Perhaps it isn't. Perhaps it's 99.99999 percent likely to be true, or perhaps likeliness is not appropriate in in such uh, enlightenment moments. I'm not sure. What do you think? Thank you, Heavenly Father. Well, it's probably worth saying that I've said it elsewhere that. Um, Uncertainty may well afford us a freedom to choose to believe according to our present values rather than according to, if you like, certain truth. And uh, so we can, uncertainty affords us the opportunity of experiencing, pursuing both right and wrong values and, I mean in particular, experiencing the consequence of such. In other words, uncertainty affords us the situation of experiencing the fruit of both good and evil. Um, so that we know, as a consequence in our heart, uh, what values are not to be cherished values at all perhaps, but actually errors, mistakes, um, values that bring disaster, not, not good value at all. And um, we learn to avoid and have an abhorrence of anything of the like. And um, a great desire and attraction to that which is good and godly, as we understand, as we find it to be. So we are prepared for heaven to be given our freedom in heaven because we will exercise our freedom to good and to harmony and loving kindness of others. And we are therefore not a harm, a danger to the well-being of the heavenly host. In other words, we need to train to be qualified, to be given our freedom in heaven. We are given a sort of freedom on earth which allows us to um, find out the consequences of good and evil and um, of course to exercise it, both good and evil. Um, we don't want people exercising evil in heaven. That's a simplistic understanding of why uncertainty is a blessing, as I see it. This uh, recording, this is a couple of years later, I'm adding this note now. Um, seems to have uh, not been finished. <laughs> so I'm just wondering why. Hang on a sec. <laughs> okay, so I guess doubts in heaven would mar the loveliness of things, wouldn't it? On the other hand, if doubts are there, they need to be addressed. And this world gives opportunity to do that. If, for instance, I think, uh, oh, I don't know, say materialism really would be fun and a good idea, I wonder if it would be nice to do it. Then to find out by practice will be the, well, the great rescue of us from materialism, you know, assuming that materialism is, of course, wrong. I don't mean that we necessarily have to be materialistic here, 
but simply see what happens when people are. We see it around us, which is learning not by doing, but by observing, which is much easier, isn't it? Now, we, we might be advised that a thing is wrong, harmful, and look to see round in, in these circumstances in this universe, if this seems to be so. And looking around, you might be very convinced, oh, it is so. So, you will have learnt by hearing and observing, and perhaps by doing, if necessary, to have cleared those doubts from your being. So this universe performs very valuable um, situation. Now, we see, it occurs to me, our role here is as children compared to God. And that may be both true and not so true. True in the sense that, like a child, we are in some sense similar to God as regards our being, but clearly not remotely as understanding and capable and all the rest of the things that we value, at least while we're here. We don't know that we don't have much of these attributes in heaven, um, but had doubt. And in order to clear the doubt, the attributes are held back or hidden from us and others by our behavior and, and words and so on such that we might experience being here as if it were a reality and have opportunity to clear our doubts while here. <coughs> so, surprisingly, instead of feeling that the disadvantage of this universe is uncertainty and doubts, they are so majorly present here in this universe that that leads us to suspect that from an all-loving God of course they must be anything but um, a harm to be present here it's something we needed to experience and and, and uh, come to work out the true worth or otherwise of such possibilities. I mean, we fall back on fundamentals, don't we? It's an all-powerful God that loves us. So if something like uncertainty and doubt seem to abound here in this universe, well, we turn it in on itself and say it's highly likely then that it's to our advantage. It's just that we don't understand it. Well, that's highly likely, I mean. <laughs> Given all the other things we don't understand while here, um, you know, we're not remotely of um, God's understanding and, and all the qualities of God. Um, and again, that it could well be for a good reason. And isn't it best to think that rather than not? Do we gain anything by not thinking that? And do we gain great comfort and assurance and courage by thinking that? That these difficulties like uncertainties and doubt and the harm that's around us as we see it is actually here for a blessing. Well, if you're not convinced by <laughs> this presentation of logic as I see it, taste and see. You, you, you know, I mean, in the case of materialism, you try it. 
Um, or you look around and see. Or better still, you listen to advice and that encourages you to look around more closely and realize that the very well-off seem in many ways no happier than the poor. And there are some great benefits that the poor can be having and experiencing, which the rich don't. <laughs> Take, for instance, now, uh, I suppose a fairly obvious example. You fall in love. You experience falling in love. You experience loving each other. But it doesn't turn out well, say. You know, in the longest, longer run. It was good for, say, three or four years, and then it collapsed. Or it seemed good for ten years, and then it just got, oh, just went to pieces, you know, for whatever reason. If you had had a full understanding and knowledge of the future, well, especially of the future, you'd have seen it coming, wouldn't you? But even of the present, if you understood um, the greater, great likelihood that you would not be in love forever, um, you might not have entered into. You know, if you could foresee, oh, you know, this person's going to treat me really badly and, you know, I'm going to be ruined and so on, you might not have entered into and experienced the great blessing of loving someone else. You loved them and they loved you, perhaps as if you were both just right, even though perhaps you weren't. What a blessing that experience was, until it wasn't. <laughs> hmm. Do I look back on a marriage that failed as being something I'd rather not have happened? No. I've had three marriages that failed and other relationships um, before that. But I haven't, uh, you know, if I were to have my life again, I would try to do them better rather than avoid them because they were such a blessing. Such a blessing. Whereas, well, it depends what sort of future knowledge I might have. We don't have much future knowledge being here, do we? So we're more willing to risk following our dreams, um, taking the benefit of the doubt on things that we think will work and be super, even though they're not. <laughs> and I still fall back, even, even, even with experience of... Uh, you know, things that we, we can't really argue, perhaps. I would still fall back on, uh, he's an all-powerful God and he loves us. And I gain nothing by not trusting that. And every assurance and reassurance by so doing. And perhaps, when all said and done, the details of life, like the marriages and failures of certain relationships and so on are nothing compared to mastering that fundamental belief to last you through eternity that there is never anything to be gained by not assuming God is all powerful all loving all wonderful, all blessing, creator of all. And you can fill in the list yourself, can't you? What do we gain by not believing that? I can't see anything. What do we gain by believing it? Wow. The possibilities are infinite, aren't they? Thank you, Dad. Love you. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you.
you that. <laughs>